How can you be sure that Mim is safe? It could be a trick. No, it's no trick, Charles. She's there and she's safe. At the Redlands? Yeah, now come on. You can I, see her right now. I can see her. Sure. Yeah. Harold, if you're mistaken about this... This is no mistake, Charles. Now come on with me. I'll take you to her. Mim's alive. Go, babe. Oh. Thanks, me. Oh. oh, hold this for me, please. I think that's John Brubaker. John, hey, come on in. Thanks, Jane. John, I don't know if you've met my wife or not, but this is Carla. Hello. And uh, my mom, Mrs. Redland. Ms. Redland, hello. We've met. Hello, Sergeant. Of course, you know who this Miriam is. Miriam Mason, yes, yeah. of course. Yes. Welcome back, Mrs. Mason. Thank you. A lot of folks around here be happy to see you alive. Not any more than the folks right here in this house. The, uh, Sergeant Brubaker, right? Well, I, I remember you from meeting you when I was in the hospital. Yes, that's right. Yeah, well, John, why don't we talk over here, and Miriam, the two of you can sit on the sofa. I'm oh, great, because I'm still a little shaky. Well, uh, should we leave? Uh, no, ma'am, not at all. Uh, both of you can stay. I uh, just have to ask them a couple of questions. Mm. Oh, all right. All right. <clears throat> I guess I don't need to tell you you're lucky to be alive. Uh, you mentioned uh, some explosives over the phone. Yeah, that's right. We both could have been blown to bits if I hadn't broken into the place and got the dynamite and threw it out when I did. Out? You were already inside a building? Yeah, it was at the block house that they had kept me in. They kept me in all that time. Yeah, it's okay. Are you all right, Mrs. Mason? Yeah, I'll be fine. I'll be just fine. Um, just don't be upset with me if I do this every once in a while. It's just kind of hard to express. All that I'm feeling now, that being here with friends and safe and everything. It's perfectly all right. John, as I was saying, I heard the fuse hissing, <clears> and <throat> I knew that Miriam was in there, locked up. So I grabbed something, broke the door down the best I could, and, and ran in there, grabbed the dynamite, and just threw it out. I know that it sounds foolish right now. I know it probably does to you. It's, but I was so desperate. I thought that the dynamite was my only chance to ever break out of there. It's, yeah. it's, it's a miracle it didn't just go up on the spot. Didn't you know how... Uh, how unstable dynamite is if it isn't stored properly? Yeah, that's what I was trying to explain to her when we were on our way back. Well, that's why I think this whole thing is a miracle, Sergeant. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what happened next? Did you make it to your car? Uh, well, not quite. Didn't you tell him about being knocked out? See, what happened is Lance hit him over the head with a gun. Um, wait a minute. Mary, there were other gonna... people there? But you didn't tell me that John, over the phone. I was going to tell you that if you'd just give me a chance. All right, please, go on. As I was saying, we were headed for my car, and at that time, we saw two men running out of the house, apparently from after hearing the explosion or something. And then, right at this point, a car drove up, and let's see, we were running. Oh, yeah, and this Lance character, whoever he is, he caught up with us, and he had a gun, and he forced us back to the blockhouse. Yeah, and that's when, see, Lance kicked me, so Gene jumped him, and then Lance hit him over the head with his gun. And that's the last thing I remember. When it came to, they apparently... Uh, bolted the door or something. Did you make out any of the faces of the others? Uh, I, I think Miriam can help you better there. Well, see, I, I only heard the voice of Lance's boss. Uh, I never did see him, but I know he was definitely there. Uh-huh. Oh, um, we did see uh, Russ Weaver. He was one of the guys in the car, and the other man was Vince Cardello. Cardello? Yeah. We've been trying to get something on him for years. Maybe this time we'll put him away for good. Well, it was him, all right. But, see, I had never seen or heard him there before that. Uh-huh. So what happened next? Well, Weaver was sent out to kill us. And um, I, how he got involved with this thing, I don't know. But, but the guy let us go. 
He let you go just like that, free and easy? Yeah, he did. He fired two shots in the blockhouse. We, we were on the outside. We were running. And apparently he did this to make the other guys believe that we were dead. That's right. So uh, he just said, run for it. And, and by that time, I remembered uh, uh, the photocopies that were supposed to be hidden in Miriam's purse that Barris yeah, told me about. Yeah, did you find them? I found them, yeah. They were in the same place. And so I gave them to Russ at that point because I figured that he would probably need them as some kind of leverage more so than Babs would at the time. Well, if Vince Cardello is the prince, then you made the right decision. I believe so, yeah. But you weren't right to let me think things were so simple over the phone. Now, I got a radio for some extra backup, and I want to sign an officer to guard Mrs. Mason. Oh, wait a minute, John. I want to go with you. If you're going to go do that, no, no, I'm Jean, going with you. Jean, please, Carla, haven't you had enough? Baby, someone has to cover this story. Well, let them send somebody else, Jean. Yeah, I, Jean, I really think that they're right. Oh, the Sergeant Brubaker, please tell him he can't go. I wish I could. But honestly, ladies, I think this time Jean's earned it. Thanks, John. Besides, I may need some more information. But he just barely escaped the last time. You won't put him in any more danger, will you? No, I won't. I promise, Mrs. Redland. This time, Jean's going to cover the story. The police are going to clean up. Carla, I'm going to be fine. Don't worry about me. I promise. I'll be back. Love you, baby. Bye. I love you. Hey, look, Vince. Come on, you got to listen to me now. You're being unreasonable about all of this. Nah, those photocopies say otherwise, Ron. So does the street, Ron. Nobody skims me and gets away with it. But that's Lance. Oh, wait a minute. You answer it. But no funny business. You tell your sidekick to get his tail over here with the ransom. PDQ. Yes? Listen, Ron, you're not going to believe this, man, but that, but... I'm not going to believe what? And what are you talking about, Lance? Carpenter came by here, but he didn't drop off the dough. What do you mean, he didn't drop off the dough, you idiot? Well, you know that uh, lawyer friend of Babs, Webster? Yeah. Well, he came in here and he told Carpenter that Miriam was at the Red Lawn house. That's impossible. She's lying dead in the blockhouse. Oh, yeah? Did you do her in yourself? No. I sent Weaver. Well, either that punk's lying, or Webster and Carpenter are out there chasing after Miriam's ghost somewhere. Tell him to get over here. Lance, I, uh, I want you to get back to Saddleback. Right now. Wow, this is all very ironic. But I've just been informed that your son let Miriam go, Vince. Did you hear me, Vince? Russ let Miriam go. Is that true? Yes. Well, are you proud, huh? You proud of your boy? I thought I was the one who double-crossed you, but it turns out to be your own flesh and blood. Everything I wanted for you, and you failed me in it. What am I supposed to do now? Vince! Oh. You feeling a little bit better now? <laughs> you can't imagine how much better. I don't think I will ever, ever take hot water for granted again. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll never take anything for granted again. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine once said, there's joy in the morning, but there's joy in the evening as well. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, closest thing that I had to a friend that whole time was a strange, strange fellow named Blue Nobles. He was the one that would bring me most of my meals and my wash water. It was kind of funny of, well, it was sad, really. And they killed him. I, I know they did. What's the matter with you two? Uh, Miriam. My own? What? Well, come on, what is the matter? Uh, Miriam, Blue Nobles is the name of the man who tried to rape Laurie Martin. No, that can't be true. It, it couldn't be the same person. He was shot down at the docks. They still don't know who did it. Well, he did disappear. He, I mean, one day he just didn't show up. I was thinking that maybe, uh, well, I only would be proud of me because I, I read the Bible to him. <laughs> I did, and, and I prayed for him, and I was thinking that, that maybe, well, do you think, you think it might be possible that he... Maybe the Lord saved him? I don't know. I... 
I know that he'd listened so closely to me, and sometimes he'd be there just like a little child. Well, it's possible, Miriam. It certainly is. Uh, but, you know, we won't know until Judgment Day for sure. You know, they even killed my little cat. Just this poor, innocent little creature. The Lord knew that I was so lonely, and so he sent me this little cat that I named Gabriel. Oh, Miriam, well, you're home now, sweetheart. Yes, indeed, you're home. <laughs> that little cat, he surely is, too. So don't worry, honey. Sweetheart, would you like to call your father again? Maybe he might be home by now. And he certainly must be holding that, holding on to that little letter from Eric, just waiting to uh. give it to you. Eric's letter, I've thought about that so much, that's what made me go through this whole thing. I, yeah, do you think Daddy still has it, though? Well, if I gave it to him when we didn't hear from you, why don't you try him again, sweetheart? Okay, I think I will. He's gonna be one happy man to see you, I can tell you that. I could hardly wait to see him. You know, for the longest time, I didn't even know if he'd pulled through his heart operation. Oh, indeed he did. And he's doing just fine, as far as Mr. Webster tells us. Hello? Uh, this is Mary Mason. Who is this? Uh, Mrs. Lucas. Okay, well, um, is my father there yet? Well, would you just tell him that I really want him to call me here at the Redlands. I'm safe. And, um, yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. She says she expects him soon. Let's come on. No. I can still make it. No, come on. We listen. Gotta go. no, Remember, yes. Lance. Vince? Oh, God, no! No! Vince! No! No, don't! Don't go! Right there. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I guess what's kind of funny is that Marianne is Lori's friend. I always looked up to her. Hey, Peter, this is still warm. Do you want some more before I pour it out? No, thanks. Okay. Well, you know, that's usually the way it happens. The older you get, the less age differences make. But I'm really glad that you're a friend of Marianne, because she really needs one now. Hey, it wasn't some pity day. No, I know, and I'm sure that that's what she appreciates. No, I'm just saying that at a time like this, when Marianne is trying very hard to get over Russ, well, that's when good friends are needed the most. Yeah. Guess who else was at Leon's tonight? Who? Dr. Phillips and his daughter, Stacy. They stopped by our table just for a second. I'd like to meet Stacy sometime. What's she like? Well, she's no fox like Amber. She's kind of average. Wears her hair like a librarian. Wears glasses. My goodness. You are such an astute observer. <laughs> you ask me? Well, I wasn't asking so much about her appearance, but I was asking more about herself. What's the person like? Well, how do I know? I just met her for a second. Oh. I see. And you uh, formed a split-second opinion? Okay, look, Peter, I don't mean to discount your first impressions. I just don't want to see you become bound by them. I mean, I know that you can see into people deeper than the epidermis. Skin deep, okay. Right, right. And uh, hair and clothes and makeup. Okay. I knew better. I know better. Just, I've been kind of wondering, you know, wondering if I'll ever get married, you know? Married? Yeah. Is that what this is all about? No. Well, I just think that, 
Well, to marry somebody, you gotta be at least attracted to them. Well, yeah, I think you do usually, but attraction isn't just skin deep. I mean, not if it's gonna last. Well, I know that. Yeah, no, it's, it's just, uh, I'm wondering if it works both ways, because I've seen girls look at me and I can tell in a flash that they're not even turned on. Hey, Peter, um, I don't want to preach at you, but uh, if that happens, count it a blessing. <laughs> Move that chair around, will you? You know, Peter, seriously, I think you're a fabulous catch, but I don't count because I'm your mother. But, you know, I just hope that the woman you marry, and believe me, she's out there, I hope that the two of you will be able to, to see what's true and lovely and enduring in each other. You know, physical attraction is wonderful, but it doesn't last unless it springs from a, a deeper attraction. A person's character, you know, who he or she really is. The truth and the respect. You think you'll ever be willing to, to get married again? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I'd be willing if the Lord had that in mind for me. Yeah, I think that if I, well, if the Lord brought the right person into my life, I'd like to get married again. But right now, uh, I'm learning how to be content. I own, I'm so tired, I don't even think I can wait up for Daddy to call any longer. Well, sweetheart, why don't you go upstairs and lie down? He'll call you if you're awake or if you're asleep. Yeah, okay, I think I will then. Okay. Now you just stay right there, honey. I'll get it. Mr. Carpenter, hello. Daddy! Oh, ma'am. Oh, ma'am. Mm. You look wonderful. You look wonderful. Oh, so do you. you I didn't even know if you were alive for so long. Oh, Daddy, you just look fine. You look so healthy. I feel yeah. marvelous. I feel marvelous. Oh, it's so good to have you back. Oh. Now, 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 wait. Wait right there. I want to show you something. Here, wait. I want to show you <clears throat> just what you mean to me. There. $400,000. I've never seen so much money before. Oh, I just wanted you to see it. You know, I, I didn't have to give it to the kidnappers. I just wanted you to see it. And what we're going to do, we're going to take some of that and we're going to redecorate the house. And we're also going to bring Eric over from England. Oh, Daddy, would you? Well, if he can, if his father will let him. Anything you want, him. <laughs> anything, anything. And I'll leave all the, all the decisions, the details up to you. You know, women know how to fix themselves up better than men do. <laughs> I thought you said I look just wonderful. Oh, you do, you do, you do. Oh, you, Daddy. you know what I meant. <laughs> now, here, Harold, I, I want you to hold this. I want to take care of my daughter. Are you ready to come home? I am, Daddy. Mm. I own you don't mind, do you? Oh, do I mind? Now, you go right with your daddy. That's where you're supposed to be. Now, I'll get a few of your things together upstairs. Now. I'll help you, Mama. How would you feel if I got married again? I don't know. It'd be quite an adjustment. Well, I wasn't too cool when you were dating Jason Prescott or Dr. Greeley. Peter, there's no need to apologize. You know, I wasn't any more ready to be drawn into those relationships than you wanted me to be. I think it was the, the loneliness and the pressure from other people that pushed me into them. But hey, <laughs> I don't have any locks on loneliness. You know, I can remember when I was 19 and I was thinking, I'll never get married. Oh, really? I thought you were married at 19. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. You're right. See? Your mother isn't so perfect after all. Well, I know that. <laughs> no, I, I knew you weren't perfect, but you know what? You're pretty close. Welcome home, Mim. Oh. <laughs> How does it feel to be back? 
Daddy, it's wonderful. <laughs> I just can't even believe it. <laughs> uh, I'll keep that here tonight. You sure? Don't worry, don't worry. Okay, I'll go on out and get the rest of Miriam. All right, fine, fine. Oh, Mrs. Lucas. Hello, Mr. Coffin. Miriam, this is Mrs. Lucas. She keeps me and the house very much in proper order. Yes, we spoke on the phone earlier. How do you do, Mrs. Lucas? I am so happy to see you back safe and sound. Your father has talked of nothing else than his lovely daughter. Yes, and I didn't exaggerate one <laughs> bit. <laughs> no, indeed. Oh, I'm so happy to meet you, Mrs. Mason. Thank you. That's very kind. And if there's anything you want, just give me a call. Okay. Thank you. Well, young lady, you certainly <laughs> have covered a lot for one day. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. You know, really, this, this house leaves a lot to be desired. And I wonder, especially for a little boy's tastes. You know, I think we ought to think about Eric. Daddy, you still have Eric's letter, right? Yes. You want to read it? Do I? Yes, please, please. Now let's see. I wonder what Daddy? I... Daddy? <laughs> You've waited a long time for this, Mim. And he said, uh, <laughs> they have rotten peanut butter here. <laughs> That's in England. He really <laughs> Dad says, and we could, he could even, he'd like to come, he'd like to come here to see me. I miss all my friends. And he says, I miss Grandma and Grandpa too. Tell them hello for me. P.P.S. I miss you a lot, Mom. How I miss you, Eric. How I miss you. Mm -hmm.